Hey, it's Seth, and welcome to Dwarf Fortress. Or more specifically, Thadar Inn, the planet of legend, as it is in this game. This is my fourth Dwarf Fortress, as the first three went absolutely horribly wrong. But the good thing is, I've learned a lot. However, I didn't really learn a lot. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Nishlas Tadscale, the outpost. And this is where we have ended up. It's actually the best landing place I think I've had so far. So first off, I went ahead and started planning out the inside of the base going down one floor. This is where we will have most of the crafting station. Okay, yes. I know, you are not supposed to put two completely different jobs that require different tools on one dwarf, but I honestly didn't know that. And don't you worry, I do figure it out. Eventually. So after the best dwarf management you all have ever seen, I placed a few zones, such as the pin for the animals and a temporary stockpile. I also decided to start a quick farm down the sandy hall, which, by the way, not a big fan of sand. It's coarse and it gets everywhere. Also decided on fixing a problem I didn't know I had, which was running out of plump helmet seeds. Turns out plump seeds start out as being able to be cooked, which meant that I would use all of my plump helmets in food, not for drinks, which doesn't give seeds. After that, though, I planned out another workshop area for smithing and crafts, and started working on some bins and beds. Something I noticed earlier while surveying this land was the huge amount of ore down by the river, so I planned for those to be mined. I also built an entrance to help keep out all the critters, or at least most of them. Speaking of critters, while I was telling the dogs we had to be trained, I noticed the first fight of the area. <laughs> now let me say I love the fighting system in this game, and the detail it goes into when describing what happened. In this case, we see the Fisher Dwarf, Eden, grab a wolverine, here's a picture for reference, by the third front right toe, and throws it, and starts beating it with his fists. Uh, the wolverine quickly fell unconscious after he scratched the head of the wolverine. I cannot overstate just how crazy these dwarves get in a fight. You'll see more of that later. Anyway, back to the fortress. The smithing area was complete, and shortly after, the crafting area would follow. I planned for some supplies to be crafted, and then started planning out the sleeping quarters. Around this time is when we got our first set of migrants. So just as I did before, I gave them all two jobs! Dwarf management at its finest, I tell you. I also built small offices between the bedrooms, and then dug out an area for farming-related workbenches. Now another thing I had trouble with in the past in my past fortresses was the lack of tools, so I queued some iron tools to be used. It was around this point when the first caravan showed up. Now I wasn't prepared for the caravan this early. So, didn't really order anything. Honestly, didn't know what I wanted. I still assigned a broker, though. Now that everything was mined out except for the large stockpile area, I planned out what would become the main attraction for this fortress. A large, onion-shaped tavern. Above this is where I would eventually hold guild halls and temples. But that is for later. While placing bedrooms and making the mistake of thinking plump helmets were fruit and not plants, and assigning a bookkeeper, yet another fight occurred. Basically, another wolverine became enraged and started attacking a hunting dog. After multiple scratches and a tackle from the dog, the wolverine collapsed and calmed down. After that, I next created a large mining zone for rocks and minerals, and then had the idea of working on an indoor beehive area. It's more of an extension of the existing farm, but I wanted to try and make mead with this fortress. And up until this point, I never had used hives, so I wanted to try and do that. Next, I added a doorway for the crafting and the tavern area, and started fixing and putting up the tavern. I also was becoming a bit worrisome of the dwarves' protection, so with some newly smelted silver, I crafted some warhammers and spears. With the hives built in doors, I also noticed something about them. They needed access to the outdoors. This was actually not that hard to fix. I basically just dug some holes just above the highs and then boom pow, they started working. 
the hives kind of had the side effect of, well, stinging my dwarves almost any time a dwarf was planting or harvesting, but they'd get over it. This was displeasing to them, uh, but to me, though, sacrifices must be made to brew the best mead. After this, I noticed one of my dwarves was uh, fighting, uh, but when I looked to check up on him, it seems that he wasn't being attacked or anything. I assume it had to do something with the freshly chopped trees. Maybe he fell or was squished or something, but... Eh, we all make mistakes. It was around this time I noticed we weren't farming or making any dwarven drinks. So I went and found out that, yes, plum helmets are not fruit. So I fixed that and started working on an area better suited for trading on the surface. And then also fixed up more of the tavern. That was then when... The Undead, alongside what was called the Hands of the Wealth Board. Which sounds a lot like I pissed off a bunch of taxmen or one percenters, and as a way to keep our fortress poor and their lives rich, they sent this militia against me. So, I instantly went to building a squad made of random dwarves, and I assigned a burrow and set the squad to defend. That's when the first of the casualties started popping up. The livestock and pets we had were all being brutally beat and bit. These undead creatures went absolute ham on the doggos, and at this point, I was panicking. Uh, not only were we not prepared, but we really weren't prepared. I started smithing up a whole set of iron armor that would hopefully give us a slight advantage. I also forbid the main entrance so that my dwarves could roam around inside and help out. Uh, that was when, though, as I saw the hands of the Wealth Board approach even closer, I realized a major flaw in the fortress design. I made holes in the ceiling. Now luckily, the hands of the Wealth Man did not jump in. However, the single undead goblin? He did. My men rushed him down and within moments made the unlucky cadaver become a debtor. This was done by stabbing it with spears, punching it in the toes so hard that they fly off, and even biting directly into the undead goblin's legs. Great job, recruit. So after a successful first combat encounter, I made a dump area for the goblin corpse, started mining out an extension to the smithing zone, fixing the holes in the ceiling, and also placing some tables for the tavern. I noticed the Wealthman militia was right outside, and stationed my men at the front door, readying for battle. Sadly, one of my doors were outside, and I did not know, and well, uh, yeah. So, it was time to bring the fight to them. We had lost too many already, and I was having none of it. So, I sent the dwarves out to fight. The battle was quick, and we lost a total of three dwarves. The previous one you saw the Spear Dwarf by a do-it-yourself brain surgery, and a final one lost due to getting cocky after biting the Wealthman and shouting, I have improved my fighting. That was satisfying, before succumbing to the opened artery. One of the biggest losses, though, was of Zas Zugalaros. I think that's how you say it. Probably not. The militia commander I had assigned had been seriously injured with his neck, left and right foot being cut open, causing nerve damage and turning my striding commander into a stationary chopped vegetable. This was greatly saddening. But we had to push on. Plus, a caravan was just arriving. But that is where we're going to end it today. Join us next time when I force my newly paraplegic dwarf to mine. Anyway, I love you guys. Know that you matter, and you are never alone in this world. Spread love as much as you can, and I'll see you.